What up, everybody? This is Drex One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good people of Amoeba Music in San Francisco. Dying Breeze, San Francisco, for all your graffiti supplies. Also sponsored by STEM Social. I got to give a special shout out to my folks at So Fresh Clothing for that hat. And I'm always rocking with my people of Derby of San Francisco as well. Behind the lens, we got King Set. On the boards, as always, is D.E.O. And today, we're hitting you with another special guest. This young man is a part of one of the biggest waves to ever come out of the Bay Area. He stands on his own as an amazing artist that has all the accolades that you could think of in the rap game and is still out there doing his thing. He's a former member of the group SOBRBE as well as an accomplished solo artist. And of course, I'm talking about the one and only Young T.O. What is it? What's up, brother? Man, I'm cool. Thank you for being here today, man. For sure. Appreciate it. Uh, Yeah, so honored to have you on the platform. We had uh, your former group member on here. Uh, We had your former manager on here. Yeah, for sure. Um, Shout out to Kilo Kurt and Lil Kilo Kurt, also friends of the podcast. And so we were talking about off camera about telling the whole story. And so now I'm glad you're here to tell your part of it. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Like I always do, we're going to start at the beginning because this is a Bay Area podcast. People need to know what it's like growing up in these different parts of the Bay. And sure. you are from Vallejo. Vallejo, yeah. North Vallejo, correct? Yeah, North Vallejo. I'm I'm, I'm from Vallejo in general, though, but yeah, I was raised in the North, for sure. So your family moved around there. You got yeah, family so, in different parts. Yeah, for sure. So I was born in uh, uh, Sutter. You feel me? That's NV. I was born in Sutter. Um, I first lived uh, in the East. Uh, what was it? I think it's some nine nine five Yorkshire or something like that. I lived in the east until I was probably like I don't know two or something like that. Then I moved to American Canyon. I lived over there for a few years until I was probably like five or something like that. Then I moved to Rancho, which is still which is all north uh, of Vallejo, but American Canyon kind of outside of Vallejo. But I moved to uh, Rancho. That's um. Till I was like, for like two years, I, I went to Dan Mini out there um, for kindergarten in the first grade, I think. And then I moved back to the East again, and I went to Penny Cook from like probably first to second grade. And then that's when I moved back to North Vallejo. I moved to uh, 310 Notre Dame Drive right across the street from Solano Middle School, and that's where I was at ever since then before I moved to... Uh, to Rancho again towards like the end of uh, high school, like eleventh grade. But from six, from third grade all the way up until like eleventh grade, I was uh, in the north. So you got to, to see and experience different parts of yeah, the city. Yeah, the whole V. You feel me? And then my 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 pops and them like they side of my family. My grandma, she lived. In the east, up until recently, she just moved back to Arkansas, cause that's where they came from. They came from Arkansas, but uh, so she was living over there. But she like borderline east, borderline south. So you feel me? She was working up um uh, in the south at the laundromat. Um, it's a little laundromat they got in South Vallejo. So you know, from a kid all the way to you know I left and came back, I was strictly in Vallejo. You know. So for someone who's never been to Vallejo, because I'm from Frisco, I honestly don't know that much about Yeah, because it's real small. Right, and it's kind of farther out from the city. Um, what is what would, what would you describe the differences between East Vallejo and North Vallejo? Um, really, the whole Vallejo is kind of the same, okay. honestly. And ain't really much of a difference. I'd say uh, um, it ain't really much of a difference, bro. Like, because it's so small, like, you can't even, like, you, unless you from Vallejo, you wouldn't know the difference between the east, south, west. It just, it's so small, bro. You you, you wouldn't really know. Got you. But it ain't really, it ain't really no difference. It's all the same. Well, it's interesting. Uh, for whatever reason, we've had a lot of guests from Vallejo on the podcast recently. Uh-huh. Kilo, we just had uh, Sugar Wolf, Lil Russell, um, Neff the Pharaoh. Sleep date. Okay. Um, 
What would you just, again, for someone who might not be familiar with that city, like, what would you, since you say it kind of all looks the same, what, how would you describe the overall culture of Vallejo that you grew up in? Man, I say Vallejo is kind of like a, it's kind of like, if you, if you kind of know the difference between like a town and a city, Vallejo is more like kind of townish. Like, it ain't really city, it's real slow. Like, if I could describe it, I'd describe it like that. It's real slow. Everybody kind of know everybody. It's real small. Like, you feel me? It ain't much to do. So anything that there is to do, everybody from every side going to be doing it. You feel me? I don't know how it is now, but th- like in my generation, that's how it was. Nowadays, like, when we grew up, it wasn't like, it wasn't no politics. It wasn't until my generation and a little bit younger than me that and down where politics was created in our city. So... Me growing up, it wasn't no politics. So it was different. Like, from every side of every city, we all going to the same places, the spot. That's where everybody used to go to, like, like the dance. Like, a, like I don't know what day it was. I can't remember. But it was like a dance and shit. Everybody used to go to, go to there. I performed there a few times. Because uh, when I was younger, like, as Mac One, when I was going by Mac One at the time, I had performed there a few times. So... It really wasn't much to do. And then if it was like parties and shit like that, like, you know, it'd be parties and shit like house parties and shit or hotel, motel parties and shit like that. Like everybody from every side of the city going to be in there, you know, because it wasn't really much to do. So if anything happened and everybody there. And when you say politics, are you talking cliques, neighborhoods? Uh, Everything, everything, everything. Like, you know, personal. Yeah, issues. everything. Like, I mean, like, okay, so if you go back to back in the day, like you always had neighborhoods. Sure. Of course, like everybody from different neighborhoods. And like if you go back to like the Mac Dre and E40 time and shit like that, you had basically North Vallejo and you had South Vallejo, which was the crest. You had the crest and South Vallejo. And it's and South Vallejo is South Vallejo, but they also got like hillside, so it's different, it's different little sections and shit, but it's it's the it's in the south though you feel me, but that's probably that's and I don't even really from what I know and what I heard you know from them specifically like it ain't never it was some rumbles and little shit like that, but it was never like no real beef like between they sections like you know it might have been some disagreements or some shit like that, but it wasn't no politics like that like nowadays it's like. All right, if you from over here, you don't mess with them over there. If you from over here, you don't mess with them over there. Or y'all might mess with each other and y'all don't mess with them. Like, it's actually, like, real politics now. Like, hood politics. It wasn't like that before. Interesting. So, it got a little more turned up during your generation. Yeah, nah, for sure. Well, you mentioned performing. Um, you, you, your music career took off from a really early age. Yeah. What, when did you really start, um... Actually, sorry, before I go back there, you talked about E-40 and Mac Dre. Uh-huh. Vallejo has such a rich musical history. Yeah, for sure. Did that influence you growing up? Of course. My first name was Mac Juan, so you you know it did. Like, mm-hmm. You feel me? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. For sure, for sure. Uh, and maybe outside of the Bay, what, what kind of um, music was influencing well, you? honestly, bro, like, my, I ain't really had, like, my uh, my pops in my life, so music kind of, like, raised me. Like, I was into music since I was a kid, since I was, like, is all I ever known. So I was raised by music, so I ain't... So I'm an actual music kind of source, so, like, everything played a part into... Like, I'm influenced by everything from everybody, from every era. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a real music person, so I could go back. I might not go all the way back to the MC Shins and KRS-1s and shit like that, but I know of them, but I might have not been listening to that. But from the from the 90s on up or from the late 80s on up, I didn't study every era of music, you know? So from every single area, from the South to the East to the when it came to the West to Uncle Luke and all them down South in Miami, all that shit, like, I'm a real hip-hop connoisseur, so... I'm really raised by it. So I was influenced by hip hop in general, everything. I love it. That's dope, man. I can tell. I feel like some of the best artists are people who really love this hip hop. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. So it was different for me. Like music was, a, I got an actual artist. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's easy for me to, like for some people, it's like music is a thing where 
it's about the money and shit like that. So they're going to make some music based upon what sell or what work and all that kind of shit. When, with me personally, it's like I'm an actual artist. So I'm going to experiment. That's why with me personally, like my music is all over the place because I could stick to one thing because I know what works. I could do that easily, but it don't challenge me. You know what I mean? It's too easy. Like if I'm doing something and it's too easy, then I got to do something else. I got to see how far I could take it because I'm an actual, a real musical person. Like it's different for people who just came into music on some man on, as a hustle, using it as a hustle. So you're going to do it at work. You're going to do this one style because that work for me is more about the expression of it. Really getting into your creativity. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad you're saying that. I think that's a good, that's good for people to know that about you. And that's a good example to set for any artists out there listening that that comes first. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so Mac Wan, that's your very first rap name. Yeah, Mac Wan the Beast, actually. Tight. And uh, so you actually start rapping and writing. Yeah, I started uh, making beats first. So I started making beats when I was like six. I had made like a song too with my cousin. So you said six? Yeah, six years old. I started making beats when I was six on what Fruity Loops. On Fruity Loops? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, my uncles did music. So my uncle, my uh, my uncle Young L, rest in peace. He uh, he was a rapper, and then my uncle G Rod, he made beats. You feel me? So I used to be seeing them doing it a lot. So that's what made me want to get into it. So he used to, I used to see him making beats on the computer. So I used to get on a computer and just try to like make little beats and shit. He used to show me how to do it. We used to play around. But then by the time we was just making beats and shit, this is around the time when I was living in uh, Astor, when I was living in Rancho, when I moved from American Canyon. And then when we, when I said I moved back to the East, I was living on like, uh, I think it's called 130 Elgin Court. I was living on the East this around, just after my grandpa died. So this like 06, 07. Around this time, this when I start like getting into the rapping aspect of it. I start wanting to rap. So then I had made a song with my uh, with my two cousins, Shannon and uh, Streets, but his name was Young Static at the time. You feel me? I had made a song with them, and then I just wanted to do it ever since then. So at that time, I was just getting help, and he was showing me how to do everything type shit. So by the time I turned like eight, I was rap writing my own songs and shit. That's a hell of a start. Hell yeah. Hey, everybody. We want to take a quick break from the episode to remind you about Stem Social's Five Mushroom Complex. You probably heard me talk about these supplements before, and that's because they actually have a ton of benefits. Stem Social's Five Mushroom Complex is made from lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, reishi, and turkey tail mushrooms. These supplements can help lower cholesterol lower blood sugar, and boost your immune system and energy levels. If you've got loved ones who are getting up there in age, this might be the perfect addition to their vitamin regimen. Or if you're looking for a boost in your own routine, check out Stem Social's 5 Mushroom Complex. You can visit stemsocial.io or go to the links in the description. This episode of History of the Bay is brought to you by TPP in partnership with Lost Soul Courier Collective. Last year, over 800 people in San Francisco died from drug overdoses. This is a serious problem that affects our entire community. I've personally lost several friends to overdoses, and many of us know people who have been impacted. We need to come together to support our loved ones who are at risk of overdosing. If you're around people who are using, remember to carry naloxone. And if you are in need of naloxone, you can get free delivery in San Francisco from Lost Souls Courier Collective by calling or texting 415-275-1922. For more information, contact Tracy H415 on Instagram or visit lostsoulcouriercollective.org. You can also get the links in the description of the episode. Uh, was your style always melodic? Um... Sort of, kind of, yeah. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was, like, my shit is still on YouTube. You could actually go listen to it, like, right now. Like, I had a song called 23 uh, um, I was rapping. I was doing more rapping. And I was kind of, like, more, like, introspective, you know, because at them times, it's like a nigga can't cuss, a nigga can't. So mm -hmm. I was more on some introspective type shit. 
And then just some kid shit. So I was rapping about video games and basketball. And, That's dope. You know? Yeah. Like, throughout every era of my shit, you could listen to and you could see what I'm on. Like, I ain't never got on the music and did no cap shit. Uh -huh. You feel me? I, when I came into music, it was about being authentic. So I might experiment with the sound, but I'm never going to experiment with the topics. I'm going to tell you the real of what's going on. It might sound different. I might give it to you in a different way, sing it or do some trap shit or do this shit, but I'm still talking about whatever I'm going through or whatever I'm on at that moment. Where does the melody come from? Because I feel like you were pretty far ahead of the wave with that kind of style of rap. Yeah, nah, for sure. Um, it came from a few different places. So I say first, like 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, was like one of my first. Up, uh, yeah, that was my first mm -hmm. influence, like was 50 Cent. So that kind of, if you know 50 Cent, you know that melodic shit. So yep. A lot of my music was like based like that. So it probably started there. Uh, I'm trying to think, bro. I know that was for sure, yeah, because I could remember that. That for sure. I had the No Mercy uh, poster up on my wall and everything. It's like 2006. So uh, I was definitely heavy into that movement. And then um, I, was, I was into the, uh, later on, down the line, I was kind of into the Wiz Khalifa shit, too. So, you know, the Wiz Khalifa, that was, he was real melodic on the hooks and shit, too. Right. And then, um, um, the Jack. I was wondering if you the were going to say Jacka. The Jack. Because I feel like him and Hustler were way, 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 way ahead of, like, the yeah. Drake. And, yeah, and I say I say rappers. 50 Cent, and then I say Jack, because mm -hmm. Wiz Khalifa came on later on down the line when I was in, like, middle school. So I was, as as an elementary school, the Jack, for sure. Because uh, my uncle used to slap that shit. He had a, a 78 Camaro, used to be slapping hella Jack and shit in there, and, and uh, closer to my dreams, Guapale, you feel me? So that's where that came from. So that's originally where it started at, I say. Like the melodic shit, that's where it, that's where it started at. But where I took it overboard at was around high school time. I started list. I was um listening to uh Jacquees at okay. the time. Yeah, yeah I was listening to Jacquees at the time. So I was like, it was really some funny shit between me and my my cousin, my brother, Young Wayne. It was some funny shit between us. It was really on some like, man, I'm finna start doing some. And of course, Nate Dogg. Of course, a nigga grew up listening to Nate Dogg. What about Dog. uh, Mac, Max B? You ever listen to Max no, B? No, I ain't never listened okay. to Max B. Okay. He has a melodic style, too. Yeah, no, nah, I was never into that. Okay. But, uh, but, uh, it was really on some funny shit. Like, man, we're all finna start, uh, I'm finna do some gangsta R&B. Like, I'm finna, and, and I say Nate Dogg, because of course he been did it. You know, probably the that's what most original yeah, like he, singing rapper. Yeah, so of course, when I go back and I do my due diligence, I wasn't the first to do it. No, of course, yeah. because you know, he did it. Yeah. So I can't say I'm the first to do it, but in a new era, I was the first to do it because it was like I was playing with the shit. Like, you could go back to 2015, I'm doing this. You feel me? 2015, I was doing this. So it was like, I'm on some, like, man, I'm a sing so on some hard shit. Like, I'm just, my, my lyrics gonna be hard but I'm gonna be singing watch this yeah. shit gonna be hard but yeah. I was like just playing around we we young at the time we not even know if music gonna work or not we just being creative we just going in the studio fucking around we don't even know if it's gonna work we just doing it to have fun it's just something that we do it's our hobby you feel me we wasn't into well we kinda was into sports but I fucked up my hand in GVRD and then I was in a basketball game I fucked up my hand and ever since then I quit playing I didn't wanna play no more so I'm like, I'm just do the rap shit. So for me, it was just rap since I was like in middle school. That's all I was doing. Wasn't no sports, wasn't nothing. It was either rap was going to work or it was going to be thugging, one or the other. But, you know, the rap shit worked. But like I said, at the time, it was just experimenting, bro. I didn't even know if the shit was going to work or not. It was really just, like I said, a joke. It was some funny shit. But, you know, it turned into something. Well, I think you were, you were way ahead of your time with that. I think it made you stand out. For even, sure. even within your crew. For sure. Um, and I, I I brought this up to Slimmy, and I'm going to bring it up to you, that I feel like there are a lot of biters Hell yeah. that have taken y'all style. And then some, I'm not going to say biters, but... Um, it was a heavy influence. There's there's some... I Because mean, we was influenced also, you sure, know? Sure, sure. But 
But I want to focus though, for on sure. the SOBRBE wave in, in terms of that. And I want to focus on your wave too, because you were the the melodic guy in the group. Yeah. And um, no disrespect to any of the guys I'm about to name, but I hear influence when I hear people like Lil Pete. Yeah. And Lil Yee. For sure. And Lil Bean. For sure. Um, it's and shout out to them. And shout out to them. I For think sure. they're all dope. For sure. But I I feel like uh, you were kind of ahead of them in some yeah. of that melodic rap, and um, their music is very, like, painful. There's a lot of pain being expressed mm-hmm. in their lyrics, as well as fly shit, as well as gangster shit, mm-hmm. in a melodic way, like you were saying. And I think uh, they took they have an original version of that. Mm-hmm. But then I think there's some people I listen to some every now and then I see someone on Thizzler or something like that. I'm like, man, they rapping like the boy or they sounding like T.O. or it's yeah. just like very kind of uh, copycat yeah. type of shit. Nah, for sure. For sure, for sure. I mean, if you, if you, like I said, like with me, like at first I was like, not at first, but you know, I'd be saying like, yeah, I started this, woo 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 you know, but like I, I still got to pay my homage to the ones that came before me. So like Nate Dogg and niggas like that, I got to pay the homage to them because they was first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But as far as like in this new era, like you would just, you you wouldn't be a real nigga if you didn't say you, you know, you was influenced by it. Like, you know, because me as a solo artist was was different than me as the group T.O. Right, so right. the group T.O. and young T.O., the solo artist is too Different styles yeah. of music. Yeah, you're doing you whole songs I mean? by yourself as opposed yeah. to just getting off a of verse. And it's just hook. and it's just different. Like mm-hmm. me as a group artist, I'm 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 like a like what's the what's the nigga where they be doing this shit? They be standing there and doing this conductor. like conductor. Mm-hmm. Like you feel me? I'm the conductor, so it's like I'm putting it all together. So on this, I might rap, I might not, I might just do the hook. I'm putting everything together. I'm putting the whole Sonic together. You feel me? So it's different. Like, I'm I'm just playing my part compared to in my solo music. It's more like I'm going all in on just like how I feel personally. Right. So with this, it's different. Like, you know what I mean? It might be like, all right, well, I know that you might not be comfortable talking about this or talking about that. So let me just, I'm going to just make shit, make hooks and shit based upon if you ever really go listen to our music as SOBRB, if you listen to my hooks, what made me such a master at this shit, it's because no matter what hook I put on there, whether I'm talking about, it's always going to go with their verse. It's like, it was never like, all right, we finna make a song about this or we finna make a song about this. It's like, everybody wrote their verses separately. So I don't even know what he finna say. I don't even know what he finna say. So when I make the hook, I got to think ahead and try to make it a uni- make it universal so that way, no matter what either one of them say, it's going to make sense. You feel me? So my topics and shit was different as a group because I had to be more universal and try to make sure that whatever they say, it matched what I'm finna say. Compared to in my solo music, I might just be depressed this day or want to pain or I'm mad or I'm whatever. So, you know, I'm gonna just go fully into that emotion. It's not as broad. Right. It's more precise in what I'm what I'm on at that time. Right, 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 right. Interesting. So there's, yeah, there's a real process behind it. Yeah. Um, going back to the timeline, so you're you're making, you're doing little performances, you're uploading mm-hmm. on YouTube. Uh, let me mention that you and the boy probably hooked up first out of your, yeah. out of that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did that come about? Uh... That came about through my partner, Puda. Like, you feel me? We was cool first. Like, you know, he on the other side of the fence now. But, you know, we was cool first because we went to school together. We went to Solano together, you know? So we was cool. And then um, basically, I guess he he kind of, he must have he knew him somehow, some way or something like that. So we used to play the, play the video game and shit. So when we was playing a game, like somehow, some way, I ended up in a party in a party chat with him. So we just was playing a game. Like, that's how our relationship started. I never even knew who he was. We just was cool on the game. You feel me? And then, like, everybody already knew me. Everybody knew me from doing music. So it was like, he used to hit me on Snapchat and shit because I used to post my songs. He used to be like, bro, it's hard. Like, oh, this hard. Keep doing this or doing that. Like, you know, he used to tap, like, that's how he used to uh, tap in with me. 
So then one day we was on a game and he had showed me a, he had like a little freestyle thing on SoundCloud, like him just rapping in the phone type shit. Or I, it was like a YG, some YG song or some shit. But he was playing, like saying just hella dumb shit. But his voice though, I'm like, I'm like, man, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Like I was listening to the to your to the to your song, cause uh, at the time I'm young, bro. So people not really trying to hear me. Like motherfuckers don't really care what I gotta say at the time, cause I, I've been rapping since I was little. So at the time I'm not. You're like what? At this time I'm a little bit older. I'm okay. like. I don't know, maybe 14, like 14, 15. 14, 15. Still pretty young. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. still young, but I ain't cussing yet. Right, type shit, right, right, you know? right, right, right. So they older than me. So at this time, you know, I'm I'm just known as Mac Juan. So, you know, I'm not really cussing in my music or shit like that. So, you know, people knew me, but it wasn't like so I used to get older, older niggas that could cuss and say all the shit that I want to say, really. And I used to put them in the studio. And then I get on song, then I had them get on there and do they shit. So then that way they could get get the crowd of people that I'm not getting because they could say the shit that I can't say. They could cuss and shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So before before that came, I had started my first group with uh, RBE. It was me, Sneak, um, Young Wayne, and my cousin Flex City Streets. You feel me? We started it first. Like, I started with them first because they was all older than me except for Young Wayne, of course, but they was all older than me and they could cuss and shit. So I started that group up first. We was doing it. We were just doing local shit, though. We was local, you know. We was doing Six Flags and the fair and little performances like mm-hmm. that. Like, we were just doing local shit. We wasn't bigger or nothing. But um, it started like that first. So I'm already in the, like, the, the CEO mindset of, like, getting other artists and then putting them putting them in the studio and shit like that because I'm like, nigga, y'all can say the shit I can't say yet. And then, so, when I hear his shit, I'm like, oh, this would be perfect. Like, I need to, like, bro, you ever thought about really taking this shit serious? He like, hell no. Nah. Like, this at the time, I think he didn't even graduated school yet. He was going he was going to Benicia High at the time. So he like, hell no, nah, bro, woody whoop. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm doing this basketball shit, woody whoop. I'm like, all right, it's all good. But then we used to joke around and shit. I'm like, man, bro, they not even putting you in them games. Like, nigga, you might as well fuck with this rap shit. Like, that shit ain't, like, you ain't finna make it in basketball, bro. You should just do this. Like, that's what I'm telling you because I'm trying to have him start rapping, get into the stew and shit. So then he like, man, I don't know, I don't know. So then his, I guess his his partner, uh, Kyrie at the time, he ended up getting a little studio. So they was just playing around type shit, making little songs and shit, playing around. And uh, I had seen him making a song one day. He had sent me one of their songs they made one day. I'm like, okay, so you finally getting in the stool? He like, yeah, bro, I ain't really taking this shit serious. Bro just got a stool at the house, so we just be playing around in this shit. So I'm like, yeah, bro. Uh, I'm like, all right, it's cool. I'm like, uh, he like, but he don't really know what he's doing. He like, uh, you should come through. You should come. I'm like, uh, I'm going to come. Let me come through. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to put him on game. I'm going to show him how to do this shit. What, what he working with? He got Pro Tools to do? He like, nah, he don't even got Pro Tools and this and that. I'm like, all right. Shit, fuck it. I'm going to pull up. So, um, this the first time I actually meet him in person. Wow. So, we've been talking all these years. He knew everybody I knew. For I knew years. everybody he knew for years, bro. Wow. Like, two years. We've been you know, Snapchatting. On the game, all kind of shit. PlayStation wow. for, like, two years, but never met each other in person. So, this is, like, 2015 now. I meet him. I finally meet him in person at the at, uh, the nigga Kyrie house or whatever. You feel me? So, then, he's showing me. He's showing me. Uh, I go in there, whatever they doing, little shit. He got some cool equipment and shit, but it's like, I'm like, man, bro. Like, I, you should come to the house, bro. Like, I got everything. I got everything. Like, we could really do this shit. Like, I know y'all in here playing and shit, but I think you could really do it, though, bro. Like, if you come to my house and we really start putting this shit together, bro, you could really be something in this shit. Like, you playing. Because he was working at the time. He was just working and shit. So I'm like, man, fuck that working and shit, bro. Just come to the stew, bro. And we put this, uh, start rapping and putting this music shit together, bro. We could say fuck all that working you don't even you ain't gonna have to work no more you feel me cause you gotta think I'm still young at the time so nigga my ambition is high I'm like nigga I'm still a dreamer you know what I mean I'm still a young nigga so I'm still a dreamer but at this time I'm probably like 16 
You feel me? So now I'm cussing and shit though. So now, um, he like, yeah, I'ma come, I'ma come. But you know, he don't never end up, he never end up pulling up, you feel me? But we still just keep in contact and shit. He be sending me songs and shit. I be sending, letting me hear what they do, bro. What uh what you think I should do, how should we do it? I try to teach uh bro how to engineer and shit, record and all that. But he didn't have the same program as me. He ain't had Pro Tools, so I didn't know really how to work his shit. So that's why I was really telling him, like, bro, you need to come. I got the real deal. I got the Pro Tools, the real official shit that they're using in the industry. Because I've been studying the music shit since I was little. So we, the shit that we can buy, we, my grandma, my uncle, they going to Guitar Center. They trying to get us the best shit we could possibly get. You feel me? Because my grandma believed in me since I was younger. So she was putting it all in into me. Like, right. whatever we needed, we was getting. That's why if you go listen to Anti and all that shit, bro, it sound like, nigga, it sound industry. So that was you all recorded never knew and mixed, mixed by me. By you. Yeah. Good shit, bro. Like, you would have never knew that, though, bro, because it's just like, it sound master? good as fuck. No, you didn't master that, did you? Bro, I was mastering, too. Wow. I had two separate, I had two separate things. My uncle used to help me master, though. You mastered Anti? The original version. The original. So if you go listen, if you listen to it, if you listen to it on YouTube, Mm -hmm. that's my version. But the Spotify, yeah, all that's it was redid from when we went with Empire. But Uh if you listen to the YouTube version of all our songs up until we signed our deal with Empire, so if you listen to all our songs up until Gangin on YouTube, that was all me mixing the master and everything. Good shit, bro. Yeah. That was on me. That's dope. I mean, um, just to compare the timeline, Slimmy did mention that you were uh, highly advanced yeah. compared to, um, to to him and the boy. And so, so uh, the boy also introduced you to Slimmy. So, yeah. So, while I was over there show, trying to show bro how to do the shit, Slimmy ended up pulling up one day. So, Slimmy C... But I don't know Slimmy, though. Like, I never knew him. Like, I never knew him. I never knew of him, nothing. Like, he in a whole nother generation to me. So he went to Vallejo High. I went to Jesse Bethel. Like, we never crossed paths. I never knew him. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I met him through the boy, like, um, probably my fourth time going over there. Going over there to their partner house in East Vallejo. So, because uh, the boy was living in Benicia at the time. So we used to all meet up right there. So um when I uh when I met him, he like um he like bro, I'm finna come pull up on you. Cause he like, man, these niggas playing like this shit. Like, you got the real studio? He like, fuck, I'm finna just come to your shit. So he came to my uh he came to my studio and then um I'm not gonna lie, let me think. Cause I know for a fact out of like the first four songs we made was all classic songs that people would know. But the first song that we probably dropped was, um, because some shit got leaked too, so all the music is out there, but the first one was Cautious. That's the one we shot the video to. Yeah. But we probably recorded, I could never, uh, we had a song called uh, KO or something like that. We recorded um, Anti- we did all that shit in like the first month of him coming to my studio. Like anti, I ain't even, we ain't even like that song. Me and him didn't even like that song. We didn't even want to do that song, but it got leaked out and everybody like, oh, y'all should shoot that. Y'all should shoot that. Y'all should shoot that. So we ended up shooting it, but we wasn't even going to use that song, shoot that song or nothing. Wait, like, that song platinum now? That song platinum now. So it was just crazy how that shit worked. <laughs> like this is in the, bro, this is in the first month of us meeting each other, we recorded, we we made a platinum song, bro. That's nuts. You feel me? So I'm like, so people rap their whole lives and never get that. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just like, so that shit was it was Why legendary. You like that, deal? Just because you got a platinum plaque over here, man. That was yeah, that shit. <laughs> that shit was legendary, bro. So so he came to the stool, and then cause really first it was just kind of me and him, like we was recording shit. And then once we start, once we sent a few songs to the group chat, uh, the boy heard him. And he was like, oh, man, y'all niggas going crazy. I'm about to pull up. Like, so then he ended up pulling up. And then I ended up recording his song. He had a song called uh, 100 Bars. 
it was like the first song. It's still on YouTube. It was like the first song that we dropped. Because at the time, this is before we even dropped anything. I was already RBE. That was SOB. But at the time, um, they had some shit called uh, 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 Detroit. They had Band Gang yeah. at the time. Mm-hmm. So I was seeing how they was dropping and they was all band game. Yeah. So I was talking to, uh, to the boy. I'm like, bro, we should just make it SOB RBE. Well, really, it was RBE SOB at first. That's why if you listen to the tag, it say RBE SOB. That's the game. Because at first it was RBE SOB. But then um, when we made, when he made the YouTube channel, he just put the SOB first because he was SOB. So he put the SOB first. And then put the RBE last. So that's how the SOB RBE came about because at first it was RBE SOB, but, you know, he changed it. So um, when we made the YouTube channel, that's basically how SOB RBE came about because about, we made the YouTube channel. So it was like, it was nothing, like, it wasn't nothing but a talk between me and him. Like, we decided that this was what we was going to do. You feel me? So once we did that, we made the YouTube channel. We dropped the first song, which was 100 Bars. People was fucking with that. Then me and Slimmy dropped Cautious. But I think Cautious might have went on... on uh, the Cameraman channel. I could be wrong, but I think it went on the Cameraman okay. channel. And then I, re- I, I recorded another song of the boy called uh, Can't Tame Us. And once we shot that video, that's when it was like... Uh, we kind of all linked up for that video. So while so when we linked up for the video, it was like a it was a, a Lil G. I I been knew Lil G. We went to Solano Middle School together and we went to Loma Vista Elementary School together too. So I knew Lil G since elementary school. So he ended up pulling up that day. And um we was all just talking and shit. And he was like, man, I'm trying to rap too, or whatever. Woody woody woody. So at this time, I'm like, man, we got the SOBRE shit going. I'm like, all right, just pull up to the studio. Because at this time, it's just me. Well, everybody that was trying to rap, they used to come to the studio. But but the only people who was, like, really taking it serious was me, the boy, and Slimmy. But it, at the time, it was really just me and Slimmy recording songs. That's why if you go back and you listen to, like, the early songs, it was just me and Slimmy. And the boy had all his own solo songs because he was working at the time. So he used to just come to the studio when he got off work. So all his songs was kind of so, was solo songs. I used to just, like, he used to come to the studio. We would pick a beat or some shit. And then, like, I used to help him do his songs, like, how to rap and shit like that because he used to be fucking up all the time. So I used to have to help him like rap and all that, get it, get the flow down pack. We used to go through that shit, bro. I'm talking about till five o'clock in the morning, bro. I got to go to school the next day. Well, you're advanced. I mean, you're starting making beats when you're six. So yeah. I can see why you're, yeah. you just got this shit figured out a little more. Yeah, so we used to, so I used to do that. That's what we used to do. He used to come to the studio. Like when he get off work, we used to be in the studio till like five o'clock in the morning. I used to, like the the key thing though, he used to have to bring me a fuck. I used to tell him, my like, bro, if you gonna pull up, you gotta bring me a, a McDonald's <laughs> fry bay or something. Cause I, cause bro, the nigga used to have me up till six o'clock in the morning, bro. I gotta go to school the next day, so I used to miss first period every day. Cause nigga, I'm in the in the um, cause I was driving my grandma car to school at the time. I was I was fucking sleep in the parking lot, cause I'm tired as fuck. I didn't go to sleep, man. Cause I'm up recording him all night. Which is crazy. That's why I salute my grandma so much because it's like anybody else would have been like, nigga, take your ass to sleep. What is y'all doing in here? But she just believed in it so much that I never even remember a time of her complaining. You feel me? So um, he was just doing solo songs at the time. So he had the... uh, um, I think the first song that we did all together was Game On. But at the time, he had 401 Degrees, I think, Can't Tame Us, The 100 Bars. Then somewhere in the line, Calvin Cambridge came apart. You feel me? Because at first, Calvin Cambridge was just a freestyle. So I ended up, so I changed the whole shit. I made the ganging, ganging, bitch. I be ganging. I made that a hook. I rearranged his shit, made his shit into verses. You feel me? 
because at the and then when I played it to him, he like, hell no, nah, bro, this ain't it, bro. Like, why you why you keep bringing that gang and gang bitch? I be ganging back. I'm like, bro, it's catchy, bro. I'm like, you just rapping, like all you doing is rapping. That's not gonna hit. Like if we we make this the hook, bro, they gonna this gonna be hella catchy. People gonna be saying that shit. You feel me? So then we end up doing it and end up working, bro. So G was not a member of either crew. He, G was a S. He was like SOB, you could say. Just he like, was SOB. Okay, okay. You know, I'm. I, when we reconnected, he was SOB. So, okay. so, so at the time, G was just getting out of jail. So juvenile, whatever you want to call it, you feel me? So G was just getting out. But I, but like I said, I've been new G since elementary school. So we dropping music and we catching like heat in the city at the time. Everybody fucking with our music. Like, cause once we dropped Cautious, once he dropped the hundred bars and we dropped Cautious, everybody was fucking with it. Like from the very first two songs we dropped, everybody was on it. The whole city. Yeah. You feel me? That's something that's really crazy about y'all story is how fast everything happened. Yeah. Cause you're talking about songs blowing up that you're not buying, uh, you're not paying for ads. Yeah. You're not doing promotion. Right? This is all just going off word of mouth in Vallejo. Uh-huh. And it's shit that's uh, blowing up quickly. I think the other reason y'all did so it, well... To- it really blew up so fast, though, bro, if you really think about it, is because at the time, I'm in school still. So I'm in high right. school. So that that school, word of mouth spread easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then not to mention that they was already kind of known around the city as... SOB because they was the shoe dudes. So, you know, that it was a big shoe culture around that time. Mm. So it was like Facebook and all that. It was, I don't forget the name of it, but everybody was trading shoes and shit. So they was already known for being shoe boys. Like they had all the shoes and shit. Like so y'all were, they was already y'all, known y'all for y'all that. Popular. So yeah, so once we came to, so once we put it together, it put everybody who already knew them, everybody who already knew me. And now they like, oh, this nigga cussing now. He going crazy. It's like, it was the perfect combination at the time. So that's why that shit yeah. spread so quick. I think that's also the power of a group. Yeah. Especially uh, coming in with four of y'all that are mm-hmm. all very different and unique when you got... It was just... It was really just three of us, though, at first. Right, 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 right. And then G's kind of just hopping yeah. on tracks here and there. But, yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, he did seem to... In my opinion, just from the outside looking in, he did seem to add some type of energy. Yeah. At least a look yeah. to, to, I, to the I, group. I, I, I had made him a part of the group because, like I said, when he got out of jail, he was... Um, he used to always, he used to always be like, bro, T.O., bro, I knew you longer than all these niggas, bro. Like, you got to help, you got to help me, bro. You got to show me how to rap, bro. You got to put me on some songs, bro. I knew you the longest, bro. Da, 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 da. So, but he never wanted to record in front of nobody. So everybody used to have to leave out the studio and it used to just be me and him in the studio. And I used to have to show him how to rap and shit. Like, you feel me? So we start doing that. And then... Mm, it was probably lane changing. We did lane changing. So once we made lane changing, then it was like, uh, but uh, I'm not, but it's that a bitch. Like that was the key line. Like everybody liked that line. So I was, so then I was like, all right, bro, you you could be a part of the group, bro. Like you feel me? Like all right, you you might got something. Like you could be a part of the group. Because at first he wasn't a part of the group. Like I just yeah. was helping him rap because he kept begging me. Like bro, I knew you the longest. Of all these niggas, bro, you gonna help them and not me. So I'm like, all right, bro, I'm a I will come to the studio, bro. So that's how that ended up happening. And then he ended up being a part of the group. Um. What you mentioned earlier about But also another thing bro It was never really a group It never right, really right, became right. a group right. Until Stretch and them came They the ones who really kind of me- Turned it into a group Right It's just two, yeah, two like, people from different crews Jumping on yeah. songs You got this combination here You got solo right. songs But not even this, two different that. crews though bro It was just a group of partners just making music together. You feel yeah, me? Like, like it's like, like ASAP. A, like ASAP like Mob. That's how I used to try yeah. to like ASAP Wu Tang clan. Some right, shit like right, that. Right. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. the fact that it was S O B X R B is what fucked it up and made it go how it went down the line. But like for instance, if we would have just came with a brand new name, it probably wouldn't have went the way it went. Cause since it since we made it like that, it was always divided. Like you had us who believed we was both, but you had R B niggas and S O B niggas who just was SOB and just was RBE. You know what I mean? 
But if so, we believe we was one. But all our but niggas around us never was really into the us being one thing. It's Not a, everybody. It's a similar thing to what Slimmy said, uh, and it also kind of ties into what I was just about to ask you. Um, this is an interesting thought that just occurred to me, as you were mentioning that your generation became started turning up more, mm-hmm. and more politics started coming into play, and um, things got kind of mania in Vallejo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how did that... Because you can kind of hear it in your lyrics. Mm-hmm. Y'all are talking about some serious shit. How much is that starting to impact the shit y'all making? Mm. Like, is that is the music you're making like a reflection of what you're starting to see happen around you? Uh, the music was just a reflection of what was going on, what was being done. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like I told you, I was a... I was always into music, but, like, I felt like motherfuckers wasn't really fucking with my shit because it was just too kiddish, I guess you could say. Right. So around the time, like, when I turned 15, I was influenced by my older cousin and shit. So I always was doing, like, little shit. I almost got uh, expelled in um, seventh grade, so I had went on independent studies. So I was always doing, like, little shit, but it got to a point to where it just was like, you know... My grandma always made sure we were straight. Uh, we had a roof over our head and all the good shit, but it was the accessories and shit. So I'm looking at everybody else. They got this, they got that, and I don't got that, and I'm trying to rap and shit. So I'm like, man, I need all the good shit. So I just took it upon myself to go out there and get it. You feel me? So at this time, like I was already telling my grandma, like when I turn 16, I'm going to start cussing and shit. I already told her that. So when I turned 15, that's when I really started jumping in the streets and shit. By the time I turned 16, I already started, was in the streets. So now all the shit that I'm doing in the streets, I'm rapping about. Got it. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes off that way in the music. And I, honestly, I think that's one reason why people rock with y'all, because y'all just, y'all represented that young, wild energy. Yeah, that for was sure. It was all in the streets at that time. Yeah, for sure. It was authentic. Um, okay, so... Uh, you mentioned some of these songs, Lane Changing, Calvin Cambridge, and then you did mention Stretch. Mm-hmm. So, again, piecing together the timeline from these other interviews that we've done, um, Lil Kilo was actually mm-hmm. the first one to really come in as the manager for mm-hmm. you, right? Well, Kilo, Lil Kilo wasn't even the manager. So, basically, how this went about was I used to be on the S all the time, like, I used to fuck with the nigga Deep Butter or whatever, you feel me? That was like my right-hand man's out there type shit. We used to always fuck around, just do hella shit. Like when I was in the streets and shit, we used to do hella shit together. So boom, whatever. We we I started like, you know, getting money with him type shit. So I used to always be at the nigga house. So that's where we used to all meet up at type shit, you feel me? But I used to be over there, and the nigga Lil Kilo was hearing about us and shit. So the nigga D Butter one day ended up telling me like, "Man, this nigga Lil Kilo trying to uh, trying to talk to you or whatever." I'm like, "Shit, it's all good. I see what he's talking about." So then I end up telling uh, the boy, and um, he like, "Yeah, we can see what the what he talking about, bro." But I'm but I'm cool. I ain't really trying to fuck with nobody. And then I'm like, man, I'm going to just see what he's what he talking about type shit. You feel me? And then at the time, um, Slimmy had a cousin or something that was trying to, uncle or some shit, that was trying to give niggas like 80 bands. And then just some hood nigga with some money trying to get niggas like 80 bands to sign niggas. And then it was some other niggas from up the street, um, College Park. They was trying to sign niggas, but... I felt like they, I ain't, I ain't really take this shit serious because I felt like I had bigger plans and shit. So Slimmy was kind of leaning towards, bro, we need to sign. My uncle got 80 bands for us. You get what I'm saying? So he on, he kind of on that type of timing. So I, so we ended up meeting with the nigga Lil Kilo or whatever. I don't even know if we met with the nigga. I think I pulled up and I, and I talked to him and he started telling me about Stretch. He like, yeah, uh, He's bringing up the dead shit, all this. His pops and shit. He introduced me to his pops. His pops started telling me about how they did all the Mac Dre shit and all that. But at the time, you know, I'm just looking at it like, oh, shit, Mac Dre. But, you know, in the crest or whatever, they look at it a little bit different. So they was kind of like 
they kind of taking it as a joke, like, oh, nigga, you gonna let you all you fucking with Big Kilo, you gonna you gonna get this, like that's what they used to call it, like it's like a bad term, like oh, you gonna fuck you over type shit, like whatever. That's the joke that they had in the credits. You feel me? So at the time, they kind of like they don't really want to fuck with it. They like, nah, bro, like. It's bad business attached to that. We we shouldn't do that. That's, That's what the of, older niggas in the press is trying to tell from us. All other rappers who went through fizz that didn't. Yeah, that didn't. Whatever didn't really shit went off, bad right. for them or whatever. So they just you know start was throwing salt on him or whatever. But I'm like, man, I, I talked to him. I'm seeing me like he seemed like he was a cool, genuine dude. So they trying to like kind of telling me like, man, um, just don't like, just don't mess with his pops. Like he cool, but just don't mess with his pops or whatever. But he ended up introducing me to Big Kilo and shit. Big Kilo ended up taking me to, uh, taking me to um, the grill. It was a studio, you know yep. what the grill is. So he ended up taking me to the grill. This is the first time I'm, mm-hmm. not probably the first time, but the first time I probably recorded in like a real big studio. You feel me? I just was at home type shit. That so a fly ass studio. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's the first time I went to a real studio. So once he took me to the studio, I'm like, oh, these niggas got some shit going on. Like, you feel me? I ain't never been in a real studio. I'm juiced, nigga. I've been recording myself all the time in the garage, making my own studio. So I'm I'm juiced. I'm like, all right, cool. So at first, how it started was the nigga, Lil Kilo, was like, man. Let me put you on a. Let me. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to do this show promote. Uh, promote these shows. I'm trying to be a promoter. So I'm like, he like, man. Let me throw this show. So I'm like, all right, yep, it's good. Let's do it. Whatever. Boom, boom. So he put the little show together at the Boys and Girls Club. So we do that. Boom. The shit packed out. Crazy. Like, crazy shit. But with us already being like in the city and shit, all the crest motherfuckers came and whatever and then didn't want to pay and all this and all that. So a lot of the fans that wanted to come in and pay the money, they couldn't get in hmm. because Eric, all, it's the homie pass. Hella homies in there and all that shit. Niggas ended up dumping in that motherfucker. All kind of crazy shit went down. So we performed like two, three songs. Then they, the police shut the shit down. So he ended up telling me like, man, bro, I ain't even really making no money off the shit. Like, I can't even really pay y'all. He might have gave niggas like $100 or some shit, maybe $200 maybe. But he like, but I know I know this nigga Stretch, bro. He 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 do all the big shows, bro. He could get, he could get us some shows, da 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 So he kind of like went, brought Stretch in as in like a, my bad, I fucked up on the show shit. Like, I can't, I can't pay y'all, but to pay y'all instead, I'm gonna introduce y'all into him. He got, he got big shit going on. I'm going to bring him over. You feel me? So I'm like, all right, cool. That's whatever. At this time, since niggas didn't get paid from the show, niggas is set on some, yeah, we finna go sign with Breath for the 80. Well, Slimmy is. He like, yeah, we finna go sign with Breath for the 80. Like, this nigga on some chimney shit. We told you he was going to be on some chimney shit. But I'm still on some, like, I don't really want to sign to no street niggas. Like, I'm cool type shit. So lane change the video. They come. Uh, Hanny. Because that's also a key name that they didn't bring up into the whole situation, too, was Hanny. Mm-hmm. Hanny was a, 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 a part of it also. So, um... I think Stretch, Stretch mentioned that. I don't think he mentioned that. Oh, no? That's, that's oh, okay. Okay. That's the that's the yeah, yeah, that's that's the name that they that they left out was Hanny. Gotcha. So, uh... So, Stretch and Hanny pull up. They pulled up together. So, boom, we meeting them. But at the time, like, they on some, like, like I said, Slimmy trying to sign to his uncle or whatever for the Eddie. So he on some like really like, man, fuck with them niggas talking about whatever. Like, they could wait. We finna shoot this video. So we shoot the video, or whatever. Like he kind of giving them the cold shoulder or whatever. Then we ended up talking to him, whatever. They like, man, let's let's, let's sit down and have a meeting. So we ended up meeting at like Applebee's or something. I think it was Applebee's in the V. We met at Applebee's. It was us three. Do not think G was there. I could be wrong. G might have been there. He might not have been there. But I think it was just us three. And um, I don't know if Stretch was there or not, but I know Haney was there. And Lil' Kilo could have or could have not been there. I don't remember. But he basically sat us down and was telling us, like, man, um, yeah, bro, I could help invest in y'all. woo doo woo woo Like, we could, we could get y'all the empire, all this. So... This is this is how the how the SOBRBE group and label shit end up becoming formed. 
Because we was just making songs and shit, putting it on YouTube at first. So once we had the meeting with Henny, he like, yeah, bro, we can do it like this, do it like that. Because at first, uh, excuse me, at first, Big Kilo tried to take us to a uh, to a lawyer in Walnut Creek, but um, and do some paperwork and, and, and did some paperwork or something like that with us, tried to make some paperwork with us or something. But we was like, nah, we gonna hold off. Uh, we didn't, we didn't do no, we didn't sign it or nothing. You feel me? Because like I told you, niggas was already being skeptical because they like, man, this got a bad name for ripping motherfuckers off and shit. So they was on some being skeptical type shit. So we never signed it. We just the blur just printed it up, but we never made it because he was on some man. Y'all need to incorporate it, and make it a business, and this and that and this. We ain't know nothing about that shit at the time. So. Then we end up meeting with the uh, Lil' Kilo, bring Henny, a part of it, whatever, boom. So then we do that. That's when we make the make the corporation and all that shit. And that's when it kind of turned in. That's when they kind of like turned us into a group. You feel me? Because mm. uh, they like, all right, we got this. Um, so they're like, you, 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 and you. We want y'all together. It was kind of like we was rock. all, because when we pulled up, we shooting lane changes. So it was already us four. Right. So they looking so like, at us for like that's the group. The, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they looking at us for already. Which, so cuz we the main ones rapping. And in retrospect that's smart because they probably saw the chemistry yeah. that the four of y'all yeah, had. Yeah, like we the main ones rapping, you feel me? But to, but we was never we never said we was a group. Right. But the but they looking at it like, man, y'all got to be together as a group. You feel me? So we like, all right, that's cool. Um he like um uh, first the first show that they that they put us on the first it's out of the first two shows um was Neff the Pharaoh and um Petaluma. Man, uh, that's the second one. I was there. I yeah, that's the second one. So once we did the Petaluma one, then we did the Cookie Crit. I think Petaluma was like September or some shit. Cookie Christmas was December. Yeah. So we did the cookie Christmas in December. Once they see us do that, everybody was fucking with us up there at that shit. Everybody kind of already knew who he was type shit. And it's the first time we kind of going outside Vallejo seeing that motherfuckers is actually fucking with this shit outside of Vallejo. You know what I mean? So boom, we see that. Then they end up hitting us like um, Hanny end up pulling up because basically like Stretch was the was the the head figure, but Hanny was the one handling everything because Stretch was too busy to to deal with us on a day to day basis. So Hanny was the one dealing with us every single day. Like even though Stretch was doing the business on the paperwork side and all that, Hanny was the one that was actually with us. You feel me? So uh, they end up taking us on the um, like man, we gonna put you put you on the stage Gemini tour. You feel me? At this time, I'm probably like in 11th grade or some shit like that. 11th grade. Yeah, I'm yeah. like in 11th grade at this time. So, uh, boom, we go on that tour. I'm missing school and hella shit. Like, you feel me? But, like, it's a few different places, though. Like, Seattle, Portland. They all fucking with us. Like, it's going up. But then it was a few places that it was just not. They wasn't fucking with us. But... They keep telling us, like, man, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be cool. So then once we do, once we come back from that, that's when they, that's when it was set in stone. Like, you feel me? All right. Hanny ended up driving us. We went to the to the lawyer or whatever. We created the SOBRBE shit. You feel me? Then as they a, ended as up. As a label. As a label. We created SOBRBE as a label. Did, then, y'all, did all y'all have equal partnerships, shares in that? Uh... It was me. I ain't gonna get into all that. I don't no wanna get into the pers- I don't wanna get into the yeah. specifics of all that. Gotcha. But uh, we created that. Then around this time now, Stretch is a part of it. So now he's taking us to labels and shit. Like, you want me to keep going into this shit in debt, bro? Cause this might you feel me? I mean, because I, I can make this shit a short story or you want me to nah, just I like it, bro. All yeah, right, yeah, cause yeah, I don't know if I'm talking too much or not. No, no, you're good. All right, so he ended up taking us to labels and shit. Um, we go to to all the labels and shit. And then Interscope was one of the labels that we ended up meeting with. You feel me? Um, but when we went to the Interscope label, 
the nigga at the Interscope label, he kind of just kept talking to me, like kept bringing me up, like talking to me type shit. So when we left and shit, niggas was playing around, joking shit like, oh man, we ain't fuck with them. They, they seem like they trying to sign T.O. I don't think they want nothing to do with the group. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So then we ended up um, coming back to the Bay Area. Uh, we ended up um, getting an offer from Atlantic. And then we got an offer from Empire. So I think me, G, Slimmy was kind of always been a whatever. Like we could, like he kind of would go on with whatever type of thing. Me, G was kind of like leaning towards the Atlantic. Slimmy was kind of like he would whatever. But the boy was like on some, nah, fuck that, bro. We going to Empire. We finna keep all our shit. You feel me? Let's go to Empire. Let's go to Empire. So I'm like, at the time, like I said, I always wanted to be a rapper. So now I'm looking at these big labels like, oh, fuck. So he like, I want to go to Empire. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Because, you know, I'm looking at, he big bro at the end of the day. To me, personally, that's how I'm feeling. Like, all right, he big bro. I'm going to go with big bro. He say, we going Empire. We going Empire. Boom. So we do the Empire shit. And that's how that came about, bro. Like, you feel me? And then... Like, around this time, it's kind of like Lil' Kilo still in everything, but it's kind of like at this point, it's like they kind of doing, Stretch and Henny is kind of taking over doing everything. Like, Kilo's still around, he's still there, but they kind of taking over and doing everything. So it was getting to the point to where it was like, you know, they didn't really want Lil' Kilo to be a part of this shit no more. But I'm like, nah, fuck that, like... Y'all wasn't even finna fuck with this nigga. He the one who brought these, brought Stretch and Hanny to us. I don't even know Stretch or Hanny because at the time, me and Hanny, we didn't really have a good relationship because I ain't really know him. I ain't really trust him like that. So he, his joke in the beginning was like, oh, T.O. don't fuck with me. He fuck with Lil' Kilo. He don't fuck with me. You feel me? So anyway, when we did the when we did the shit or whatever, they was kind of like trying to put Lil' Kilo out and they didn't want Lil' G in either. Because like I told you, they didn't feel, they, he really wasn't a part of the group, honestly. So they didn't want Lil' G and they didn't want Lil' Kilo in it. So uh, I'm like, nah, fuck that. You feel me? Lil' Kilo got to stay in it. Like, you know, if Kilo ain't in it, I ain't in it. So that's how Lil' Kilo ended up being a part of the Empire deal and all that shit. Uh, looking back on it, what do you think of that decision? Keeping your, your master's... Um, it was a great decision. Uh-huh. It was a great decision. Wow. It was a great decision. I ain't gonna lie. It was a great decision. You feel me? Wow. That's the reason why I niggas still don't got it. I can sit back on my ass today because of that decision. Nice. <laughs> you feel me? So that was a great decision. You feel me? Shout out to the boy for that. Wow. That was a great decision. Okay, and then that leads to your debut, like, official album. Yeah, um, so... How the album came about was uh, we was on tour. We was on the Sage the Gemini tour, and they kept telling us like, uh, we need we we need you to sing. Um, we need y'all to, to put some songs together for a mixtape. So we like uh, just take all the songs that's on YouTube and put them on the project. Mm-hmm. So that's these how are I, songs that are in the millions of views yeah 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 yeah. so we like just put that on a project like cause at this time nothing is on streaming services we don't even know nothing about streaming services everything is just yeah. videos on YouTube so um, we like fuck it just do that at the time like we not really we not even caring about this shit cause like I told you we didn't even we didn't even they didn't even really um, wanna fuck with Stretch and Hanny and all that so we kinda just on some like Man, fuck what these niggas talking about. So, uh, Stretch had me send him the sessions to the songs and shit. Then we was like, we was we was getting mad and we was going back and forth with him because we like, bro, the songs are already mixed and mastered. Just put the songs on the album. He keeps saying like, no, nah, bro, we need to get it done professionally. You feel me? So at the time, I'm just on some like, man, I don't fucking like... I don't really know how this shit work, whatever. And then I'm not knowing the abilities that I got. So I'm not knowing, nigga, I am doing this shit professionally. I'm just looking at it like, all right, fuck it. Dude. He say we got to do it professionally. We got to do it professionally. So then that's when I guess he sent it to Dre and had Dre mix it. But if I would have knew what I knew now, I would have never let them do that. Because now it's like this nigga get the credit for making some shit that I did. Yeah. 
You get what I'm saying? So if I would have knew what I knew now, I would have never let them do it. But because even when when they did it at the time, we was hella mad. We was in Utah. We was in this we because uh, we had split up. So some of some people had went back home and then we uh, went to Utah in a little van, a uh, little SUV. We was hella mad when they dropped when they when they uh, when they when they, uh, either the album dropped or they sent us the uh, audio. One or the other. Either the album dropped or they sent us the audio. That's why the album is named S O B R B E too, because we didn't want to do the album, so they just named it S. So we had so we just named it S O B R B E after the group, because it was like. We really didn't care about that shit. We was so stuck on what we was doing. We was like, bro, fuck it. Like, like um, we don't give a fuck about that. We trying to drop some more videos because, you know, that's what was working for us. Right. That's all we know. So we like, man, fuck that album. So that's why I didn't get no name because we was mad. Like, bro, y'all niggas then fucked up the songs. Y'all took the songs. Y'all remixed them. It sound hella dumb. We was hella mad. And so they was trying to get a name out of us. We wouldn't give them no name. We was like, I don't know, name S O B R B, because we was hot. We was mad, like, bro, you niggas fucking our shit up. So the album come out or whatever, and shit, it became a classic. And things really start to take off from there. Hell that. yeah, that's after that we ended up going on our own tour, and shit was Y'all crazy. Y'all became a nationwide act. Yeah, pretty much. One of the hottest groups in hip hop, mm-hmm. um, Coachella, mm-hmm. performance, mm-hmm. Post Malone, Twenty One Savage, mm-hmm. uh, tours, yeah, tour, tour, uh, Kendrick Lamar, Black Panther mm-hmm. soundtrack. Uh, I mean, fuck, man, what am I missing? Uh, so many accolades. Oh, yeah, we did a yeah. Marshmallow album, Hit Boy album. Yeah. Um, well, we did a Marshmallow EP and a Hit Boy album. Looking back on those times, what do you think was the biggest height that y'all reached? What stands out the most to you from those times? Um, probably Coachella. Coachella and um, the Black Panther soundtrack. Yeah. Them two. We did another we did another uh thing too. I don't know if it was called Day and Night or some shit. I don't know what it was called, but I think it was out here in San Francisco. Uh that was actually way packed, way more packed than fucking outside Coachella Lands. Outside Lands. Oh right. We did Outside Lands, bro. That shit was gigantic. <laughs> I'm yeah. talking about you can't even you we couldn't even see all the people that went so far back. Yeah. And, right. and 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 I'm talking about all these people got their hands up going crazy, bro. So far back that we can't even see them. Yeah, man. That's main, that the main stage. Unbelievable. That's the same stage. Like, like you know how they got that footage of uh, when we did Rolling Loud in the Bay Area? How crazy that shit was? That shit ain't got nothing yeah. to outside of that. No, that, that's the stage that, like, some of the greatest acts in music yeah. have rocked on. Like, fucking Paul McCartney and, like, Metallica. But the Coachella shit. shit was key because just the name of it because the because it's Coachella. Right. And that was just some shit that's impossible to do. Right. So for us to do that was, you know. Well, in Black Panther 2, you're basically getting us, uh, you're getting respect and a good look from one of the greatest rappers of all time. Hell so yeah. I mean, one the, of the greatest, greatest rappers of, of our, of our time. Yeah. The greatest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not one of them. Right. The. Him, himself. Uh, and you got a chance to build with him directly too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I ended up really uh, locking in with J-Rock, though. Is that right? Yeah. That really ended up being my boy. Like, he used to give me hella advice and shit. I used to talk to him all the time. Like, we met Kendrick. I only met Kendrick one time, but you feel me? I didn't talk to J-Rock, pulled up on J-Rock hella times. Like, he really, you know, embraced me. Well, I brought this up with Slimmy, too. Uh, Just, it, it was dope for me from the outside looking in, just as someone who supports the Bay, to see y'all plug in with the other uh, West Coast acts that were emerging at the time, like Shoreline Mafia, yeah, O Three Greedo, and, and yeah. um, Draco, Draco the Ruler, yeah, Draco was early too, right? Like that, uh, I could never. That's like a song that we had did, like, like I told you, like in the first month or something that we first got to. Uh, I first met Slimmy. He first came to my studio, so that's like 2016 or some shit. Draco fucked with us hella heavy. He ended up doing an I Can Never remix. So this is just off the internet buzz. So yeah, this is just early. off the internet buzz from early. He was tapped in early. Like he 
when we was just popping in Vallejo type shit, he knew who we was. And y'all, the same for him, goes for him, you were... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was off that uh, impatient, impatient freestyle at the time. When did y'all actually get to meet for the first time? I ain't never met him. You never got to meet nah, him? I ain't never met him. So it was all songs to... Uh... Yeah, and nah, I only did one song with him. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, the, uh, the boy and them, they all knew him, though, but I never met him before. Got you. But uh, me and Draco, we, I mean, uh, me and O3 Greedo, we locked in, though. Yeah, you have a couple songs together, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We did, like, probably five, six songs first day we met. Back to back to back to back. Dope, man. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I think this is something that this whole run of, of all the people we're naming, including y'all, this is something like people are going to look back in the history books and, and f see how major it was. Um, the unfortunate thing about it is this is also kind of when it seems like, uh, y'all are having differences within the group. Mm -hmm. Um, there's certain moments where like, uh. I don't know, like, I guess it got kind of public that, like, there were some disagreements going on. Mm -hmm. um, obviously. That came in 2018, I think. Yeah. Was it hard? Was there a lot of... Uh, we, we, we talked earlier about, like, the pressure from different people around your crews, but was it also hard? Like, I can imagine <clears throat> being so young. Was there, like, a lot of pressure get becoming that successful so early? Mm. Like was that stressful? Only in, only, 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 only in the responsibility aspect. Like you got to because you become press run. You got to no, no, no. Because you becoming the head of your family. Ah, uh, feel me. So now you got money and that's that's you have that's money. that's where it, that's what it was. And that's something you do. All the the other shit that niggas be talking about. I don't know nothing about that. You just handled that shit. It's just another day at the yeah. office. Nah, that it's like it wasn't like that for us though. Like we, that's a narrative. They try to use that as a narrative to make a nigga seem like he, Jimmy Neutron, big headed on drugs and can't be controllable. Like oh, I wasn't that type aware of, shit. of that. I was. You know what I'm saying? Curious. Nah, but I'm telling you though, that shit. That's, that's just a. People that's just a narrative, that bro. That's uh -huh. a narrative. That's not real, bro. We right. had fun. Right. That shit was lit. Right. Going on all these shows, doing all these tours, going here, going there, doing interviews, all that shit. That shit was lit, bro. Yeah. You feel me? That's just a narrative that niggas try to paint and make it seem like something, bro. But we was having the time of our lives, bro. It wasn't never no issue with nothing that had to do with music. Right. But you were dealing with uh, what you were saying with uh, family. Yeah, the issues stuff. came from, from entitlement. And not entitlement from each other, but entitlement from the people around us. It came from entitlement, like I said, being ahead of your family. And the entitlement is just from the, the, the it still goes into the street aspect of it. Because you get, you're, all these people that's entitled is in the street. You right. get what I'm saying? So that's where different people click up, click to different people and try to build their inner circle and get close to different people to try to conquer and divide. But that all come from entitlement. Somebody wanting more than what they, you know, deserve. So I was going to be fucked up when you're coming out of an environment where nobody really has much of anything. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you got it. Mm -hmm. And there's that's when that crab in the bucket mentality kind of right. sinks in. Right. And that was kind of like my whole thing about it. It was like, you know, where I kind of was kind of took it personal a little bit. It's just because I felt like that was something that we didn't know. You and like I said, we was that. and we was yeah. dealing with it early. It the the issues started in two thousand. It's been there from the beginning. It was never one from the beginning. We was one, right? Us as the group, we was one. Right. But all of us together was never one. But but um, from the beginning though, uh, we dealt with it early. We we started dealing with it early, and it was like I uh, felt like the people that was around us that. That should have had seen this shit before, and that did see this shit before. I don't feel like they they put us on enough game to 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 prepare us for it. So a lot they kind of just let us crash ourselves. It's a lot to navigate for uh, such a young person. Um, and yeah, look, just again, this is all outside looking mm -hmm. in. It does seem like yeah, there was probably a lack of guidance 
that, yeah. that, that y'all needed at the time, which is also hard to provide when everything's moving so fast. Mm-hmm. And, um, there's so many successes and so many uh, wins. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for your next album, G is no longer in the group. Mm-hmm. He, he... Well, actually, no. G wasn't was wasn't not in a group to our last album. Okay, so okay, so there's a there's a second. So album. there's uh, uh, SOBRBE Gangin Gangin Two Gangin, Gangin two. Three. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, the Hit Boy One and then it's Strictly Only Brothers. Okay, so obviously we don't have to get into this. So he wasn't he wasn't on the group in the Strictly Only Brothers part. Right. But, so but he, not for why people think, though. Everybody try to act like his little situation that he got going on was why he wasn't in the group. That's not the truth. There was uh, He was having issues prior to that. Yeah, he was, it was some whole other crazy shit on tour that happened, the reason why he wasn't in the group. You said on Twitter? On tour. On tour. Oh, yeah, yeah I think I saw a video of that. He got what? on stage. Nah. Oh, okay. Hell nah. Something else. Hell nah. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot to keep nah, track bro. of, brother. My bad. Hell nah. We was on tour, bro. And they put some allegations on him, so we had to send him home. Okay. Because they was going to come after all of us. Got you. Okay. Well. And then from there, it, that's where the sep- that's where he wasn't part of the group no more. Right. And everything else happened after that. Yeah, well, and he ended up getting a deal with Def Jam, too. Yeah. And then, did you have a, a solo deal as well? Yeah, that's what, remember when I was telling you about the Interscope shit? Yeah. So, they was trying to sign me, you right. feel me? So, uh, I ended up meeting with Geffen, I think, or some shit like that, and I met with Interscope, and I just felt the vibe with them. So, you know, I ended up signing to Interscope. Right. As a solo? As a solo artist, yeah. Was this after the group had already gone their separate ways? Nah, this is when the group was still together, so... Mm. So, um... This is in 2017. So, um, I, 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 I hear from what they say, well, not from what they say, from, from what Slimmy say, like the narrative that he feel. Uh, but what I would say is, the truth of the matter is, bro, when I got my solo deal, like I told you, I never, we all became close, but, you know, I always was, it was me and the boy. We was like this, you feel me? Right. So when I got my solo deal, the boy told me to do that. The boy like, bro, you better do that. Get that cheese, bro. You better do that. Like, the boy told me to do that. Like, I told you, the boy been, before I knew who he was, he was telling me, like, bro, I fuck with your shit. You go crazy. Like, this is how we even locked in besides me. And then I'm listening to him telling him, bro, you could do this too. Like, you think I'm raw, but nigga, you could be raw. You feel me? Like, so... It was never an issue with that, bro. That never was an issue. That just became a narrative. That was never a problem, bro. Never was. Nothing with music ever was a problem, bro. Mm-hmm. Never. It was never nothing in music that was a problem. You feel me? So when I did that deal, um, I never, I never dropped the, so I never dropped the album with Interscope because when I signed my deal, right, boom, I signed my deal. I think we in the process of doing like we we did we already did the Empire deal first. So we like, all right, we gotta get that album out the way first. We had all that done already. So that the first album, Gangin, that dropped. Now, excuse me. I ended up dropping my single, Misunderstood, all that. It's been, they spent like 50K on that video, crazy shit. Like it's finna go up. You feel me? So in the process of me doing my solo album. Um, my and you know you get signed by the A and R and all that. So while I'm doing my solo album, I finally get the album done. We we finalize the track list and all that. Misunderstood was the first single. Like I got all big producers and shit. Everything finna be big. You feel me? But what ended up happening was in this period of time, um. This is like 2018 now. So in this period of time, some shit ends up going on, whatever, that split the group up. But it didn't split the group up. It just, it, it some street shit happened. Niggas was blaming niggas for some shit that my niggas didn't do. You feel me? And then come to find out, they the ones who really did it. It was friendly fire. You feel me? They killed their own partner and tried to blame my niggas for it. And so that's what split the group up. 
that's the truth that don't nobody know. You feel me? But it's been so long now, and the nigga who did it, he did. You feel me? He ended up dying, so you feel me? I could talk about it now. You feel me? So he he was my partner, Trey. I got him tattered on my face, you feel me? He was my partner, bro. That was my brother, bro. You feel me? He got killed. They tried to say some RBE niggas did that, which wasn't true. It came out down the line. The police figured it out, everything. It was the nigga who was with them that did it. So they hit their own partners, try to blame it on my niggas. You feel me? They did some snake shit. You feel me? End up trying to do something. End up, you feel me, trying to backdoor us, hit one of my niggas, and then, you feel me, that's where it was, in the streets, it was over with after that. It became two separate things. Yeah. In the street, though. Only in the street, you feel me? And we kept it in the street. Didn't nobody know. You feel me? Because me and the boy was still tight around this time. We 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 wasn't, we didn't let that divide us. You feel me? But like Slimmy told you, remember he was like, I had a kid at the time. I wasn't around and all that. That's facts. He wasn't around. He wasn't outside. He didn't know nothing that was going on. So all he know is now his hood don't fuck with us. You feel me? So he don't know the intricate details of what happened. All he know is his hood don't fuck with us. So he gonna go with his hood. So he ended up making a video post, which is on YouTube, because like I said, it's the narrative. People try to act like in 2020 when I did my live, that's when the group broke up. No, if you go look back in 2018, he posted a video, you feel me, of a... Some little crackhead ass nigga talk about some, yeah, you know, we SOB, we don't fuck with them RBE niggas. He posted it on his Instagram. So that's when it went public. That's when the world found out that it was something going on between us. And me at the time, being who I am, I took it personally and felt some type of way. So that's when I had made that first post, like, man, this is our last album together, all that shit. But the next day, Stretch had him fly because I was in LA, like I told you, working on my album. So he had him fly out there. We shook hands. You feel me? We like, all right, it's all good. Woo, woo, woo. And now they like, all right, we can't stretch telling me like, man, we can't drop your album because it's going to look like you leaving the group and going solo. So we got to push up. We got to, we can't drop your album. We got to wait. We got to do another SOB RB album and then do your album. So, so me being a real nigga that I am, I'm like, all right, because I don't know how the business work at this time, bro. You feel me? I don't know that nigga. Once you stop doing this and doing, then the A and R gonna disappear. He gonna leave. They gonna be. You feel me? I don't know all the this the, the the intricacies of this business, but he know. But I didn't know. You feel me? So I had to put my album on a back burner. That's when we did Gang and Two. If you listen to Gang and Two, it's a lot of. I'm 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 main I'm. On majority of the songs on Gang It Too, even if you listen to the features, I got the song with Quando Rondo, I got the song with NBA uh, Young Boy. Like, at this time, we couldn't get Slimmy in the studio. You feel me? We couldn't get him to record. Like, you know, and, and how, when we dropped uh, Demon and Mufasa in 2020, Me and the Boy, that's why that album came out because we was the only ones recording. We couldn't get Slimmy to record. You feel me? So it was just me and him. So we was like, fuck it, then we might as well just make our album together because we can't get him to record, you feel me? So that's why on the Gang and, the Gang and album, it's like all the songs was recorded, we just, and we had to have him come in and do his verses, you feel me? Because he just, he wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't record, you feel me? So, which now I understand from watching what the boys say is because he, was, he wasn't fucking with me, but you came and you, already, you shook my hand, I'm thinking we good, you feel me? But from what the boys say, this is why he stopped talking in interviews because he already knew it was finna be over and all this and all that. I'm not knowing that. If I would have knew that, why you, why would I stop my album, bro, and give up my biggest features? NBA Young, bro, do you know what the uh, NBA Young Boy feature would have did for me on my solo album at that time? Why would I give up my biggest features and shit, bro, if in my head I'm thinking, fuck this group? Why would I say, all right, fuck my solo album and everything? If I'm saying, fuck this group, bro. And you could go listen to the music, bro. If you listen to the music, it's not... Remember I told you the S-O-B-R-B-E-T-O and the Young T-O is two different T-O's? If you listen to the uh, Gang and Two, that's Young T-O. That's my, that's my music. My voice is slurred. Like, I'm on some slime, like, trap, rock star shit. My voice changed. All that shit. I was going into a whole nother lane. You feel me? That was because I had to take all my solo shit 
and put it into this because stretch like, bro, we got to make this big. We don't have no big records. So it'd be, yo, it'd get a better look if you put your big songs on the group album instead of putting it on your solo album. And me not knowing at the time, I'm like, all right, fuck it, hell yeah. So that's why I'm the only, but if, but if you look at the narrative though, it's, oh, uh, T.O. think he this, he think he Drake, he woo, 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 woo. Nigga, how I think I'm Drake? Cause the Nick, the, this nigga telling us we need big records and he got me sacrificing my records, nigga, to put on this group album. You feel me? Like, so these, these is just narratives that niggas be paying, but I be feeling like I so much of real, I don't be feel like I gotta speak on this shit, but this history of the base, so we gotta really tell the truth for how it went. You feel me? So, boom, we do that album. Like so I told I, you. I, can I just, can we kind of pause you yeah. just for a second, T.L.? Uh, you shared a lot, bro, yeah. just now. Dude, you've been carrying some heavy burdens, brother. No, nah, for so, sure. I just want to acknowledge that. I'm sorry for the loss of your friend. That is a crazy circumstance to be caught up in and have that be in the way of your career and your success. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that it, hearing you say that ties back to what we were talking about at the beginning of this interview of just the shit in the streets surrounding y'all mm -hmm. starting to change. For sure. And it's fucked up, bro, that... Um, you know, we do this hip-hop shit to get away from that. Hell yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't think... I'm glad you're sharing this because I don't think people realize that this is what you've been trying to do. You've been trying to do the right thing and go in this direction, and this is the shit that's surrounding you. And when you speak about the lives and the videos, because you heard me ask Slim me about it, mm -hmm. this makes a little more sense, man, because there's a lot that's of... The, that's why I'm telling you, because people looking at it like, what the fuck, this nigga going I, crazy. I, I, like, I didn't look at it like They that. don't know. I, I I'm not saying it, you, no, but no, I'm no, just saying sure. in general, right, people right. looking at it like, damn, this nigga lost his mind. This nigga going crazy. But you got to think, bro, this is years of me sacrificing everything. Well, it's, literal, it's literally lives being affected yeah, by this. Yeah, bro, I'm sacrificing yeah. everything, bro, and, and y'all are playing with me, bro. So at a point... All that shit gonna build up. So even though I try to go live about one thing, in the middle of me, I'm smoking this shit. So as I'm smoking, I'm getting hired, like, nigga. So, and I'm getting madder. So now I'm just spazzing out and I'm saying hella shit that, and I can't even stay on topic because, nigga, I'm thinking about so much different shit that had happened over the years because I wasn't even going on there to even go at them. You feel me? I was just mad about the situation with Bro and them specifically. You feel mm -hmm. me? Because it was just like, nigga... So when that situation I told you happened with bruh, right? One of the SOB niggas, he had an RBE chain because that was my nigga, D-Butter. You feel me? He had an RBE chain. The, the chain that the niggas posted saying that they took was his RBE chain. I've been asking y'all for years, bro, what's up with that chain? I, I, can y'all get that chain for me? Because y'all still cool with dude. I don't fuck with him no more, but y'all do. So could y'all get that for me? Cause I, cause I got a feeling like he go like niggas gonna pull some weird shit, try to act like they took something, and then I'm gonna have to spaz out on everybody. Uh, this is a pre warning, bro. This is in 2019 when I'm telling them that this is what's gonna happen if he do this. 2020 come and he do it. Now I'm mad at everybody. Now I'm mad at you because I feel like, bro, I asked you to avoid this. You supposed to be the top hat over here on this situation. You supposed to get your homie, but you can't. You ain't got no control. So now I'm. So now I'm saying that's why I'm like, all oh, you niggas bitches, woo, 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 you feel me? Because I'm like, how you let this happen? Like, you feel me? But, but you I know, that's it's it also what like it what you had said, man, like kind of you're young, bro, and there's like it seemed like you probably could have really used some, maybe you did have someone who was like, bro, don't go, don't go on the internet right now. Don't. I didn't though, bro. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you, like, yeah. when you become in this position, bro, you become the head of your family, you become the head of everything, bro. So it's so it's hard to like you ever heard the saying, what I'm supposed to uh what I'm supposed to get somebody who got everything already. Mm -hmm. Like when Christmas and shit come around, yeah. you know, people will say some shit like that to you. Mm -hmm. It's that mentality. It's what right, I'm going to tell a right, nigga right. that... I'm going to guide him. He's I'm going to guide him. He already up he's here. He's supposed, to be, up. he's supposed to be showing me the way. He's supposed to be right. putting me on. It's, right. That becomes right. the mentality right. of the people around you. Do you think, had, had you had that type of uh, positive influence, if certain things were kept off the internet, that the situation could have uh, resolved differently, or was it already just uh, um, beyond repair? 
like I had said earlier, bro, I felt like, yeah, of course, looking back on it now, I feel like people around us who knew what was going on, I don't feel like they took the proper steps, bro. Like, you would tell me, like, oh, yeah, I feel where you coming from, bro. You right. You feel me? But hold on right quick. It'd be people who uh who would be around, they'd be saying like, you know, like the 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 people who in control of the situation, like, yeah, bro, you right. Like you, you, you ain't saying nothing wrong, but but it's the way you doing it, it's the way you saying it, or the world don't know. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you can't tell a nigga he right behind the scenes and then but you putting it in the public so you wrong. Nigga, if I'm right, I'm right. It don't matter whether I'm in the public or private, I'm right, bro. So it's like, that's what I stand on was right. So if I'm right and you telling me I'm right, I'm going to act like I'm right in public. Now, if you would have told me I was wrong in private, then I would act like I'm wrong in, pri- in public also. But you telling me I'm right. Yeah. So in the public, yeah. I'm going to act like I'm right. But you going to act like I'm wrong in the public, though. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that... Because you feel like, yeah, you right, but you don't need to let the public know that. Well, that that's why I bring this Come up, on, not to criticize you or anybody else in, in this situation. It's more for an example for other people to, to learn from because so. it's so normal to see... I see all these big rappers all the time going on, go on a live or going... And another on thing Twitter about that live shit, too, that people don't know the reason why it ain't about the narrative of what nobody got to say because I do whatever the fuck I want to sure. do. But the reason I don't go on live no more, though, is because around that time when all that shit was happening, hell, the shit started going on. The police actually hit all hit our Instagram. Like, you we got to uh, notice that the oh police mm, hit the ground. They so. subpoenaed Instagram for Yeah, they hit the ground for everything. It went through a nigga whole ground. So once I seen that, that's why I don't do the live shit no more. It's time to get a little more mafia you feel me? the way you move. Yeah, that's when I learned, like, like, okay, that. this shit, you know? So that's why I don't really fuck around with the internet shit like that no more. Yeah, man, I mean, trust me, bro. Uh, I got a fairly big platform, right? There's shit that happens all the time. People take shots at me. There's there's shit. There's a lot of shit I do offline that I don't put online. Um, and I, that's a lesson I had to learn, though. Hell uh, yeah. To just, uh, to just keep it separate, bro, and... Um, I'm sorry that that all had to happen for you guys in such a public spotlight. But again, I'm glad you're sharing it because what you're saying uh, makes, I, I understand it a lot better. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, w- I wish you would have had that positive guidance, but um, it sounds like you've already learned from that situation. Yeah, of course, bro. Like you got to think about it. Like I told you, bro, I came in this shit. I've been doing this shit since I was eight. We start popping when I was like 16. Yeah. Bro, I'm 25. I'm finna be 26 this year. Right. This is 10 years of experiment of experience that a nigga didn't learn. So now you talking to a whole different person. Like, I was a boy back then. I'm really a real man now, bro. I got a daughter yeah. and hella yeah, shit. Yeah, so I'm yeah. a whole different person yeah. than I was then. So I could look back with a bigger, and I could tell you the real, not me being in my feelings, not me, nothing, bro. Like, I can tell you it, the real deal. Like, you know, from a grown man perspective. Yeah, I hear it. I even it, tell you when I'm wrong. I'll right, tell you the right. truth, bro. It's, com- it's coming off that way. You're sounding very mature, man. And uh, I could tell that all that shit happened. You were, you were a different person. Um, but so going back <clears throat> back to that narrative or uh, that timeline. Mm-hmm. So uh, I forgot when I hit the pause button real quick, but you were saying... Uh, Basically, that's what happened. It was the back and forth a little bit. And um, from there, it was pretty much, that's when the public found out mm-hmm. that SOBRBE was was a rap. Mm-hmm. So uh, in your recollection, what, what happened from there? Man, I tried to keep the shit together for two more years, bro. We dropped our final album in 2020, Me and the Boy. Um, that's what happened, bro. You feel me? But yeah, that's 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 what happened. Nigga just tried to keep the shit going. Cause like I told you, it didn't have nothing to do with us. It had something to do with everybody around us. You feel me? But yeah. you know. That's a tricky one, bro. Do you do you think that has something different gone? Like, could that situation have been avoided like like 
uh, the street shit bleeding into the music? Could different decisions have been made, or is that just that's just only way, bro? Is if nah, only way is if uh, ah, right, bro, yeah, it wasn't. It's too I couldn't, yeah. and, and you know what? Now that I think about it, it's like. Bro, so much niggas was taking L's and shit, bro. So nigga was really out there, bro. Really outside, bro. So I ain't even gonna lie to you. Even if a nigga did tell me what I need to do, I might have not even listened, bro. Right, 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 right. Because I'm really outside at this time, bro. Every day. Like, tripping, too. Full-fledged. Well, again, I think that that is the energy that is captured in your music, and mm-hmm. people can say whatever they want about it, but that is that is some real shit. Mm-hmm. It's authentic. Um, so the group, the group uh, is is done, um, but you've continued to make music. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the Interscope deal didn't. That... Oh yeah. So back to that shit, right? So boom, I do the uh, we dropped the gang in two. Like I said, I gave my uh, young boy feature, all that shit, put, all did all that. So now when I come back and I'm ready to drop my album, my A and R gone. They, they you feel left, me? Uh, the A and R gone. Nah, he's still at Interscope, and now he didn't move on. This nigga oh, working with Travis Scott now. Wow. He ain't got time to. It's over with. Like I didn't. I I I, I blew my chance. But I didn't know that that's how this shit worked, bro. I'm not, I ain't never did this shit. I ain't you never been in the music gonna, industry. Do you that. You're gonna get come, those songs up and then come back and, and then come back and then come back and and then do do you feel me my solo shit. Uh-huh. But it was over with at that point. They like, oh, it's over with. So I had to get a new A and R. You know when a new A and R come in, they don't really get the they don't really get the credit really for you because they didn't really ain't the ones who signed you. But so my original a r was Sycamore, but he ended up leaving. You feel me? He ended up fucking with um, Travis Scott doing all that at the time. So, nigga, you with Travis Scott, what the fuck? You need to come fuck with Young T.O. You get what I'm saying? After he, at, at first you was with me, but nigga, I didn't have you waiting for a whole eight, nine, however many months I had you sitting here waiting to drop this album. You own the bigger and other things now. You feel me? That's that's how the label shit works. So now, when it's time for me to drop my album, I just gotta put some songs together to drop a tape. You feel me? So I ended up dropping the trust issues tape. And at this time, like I said, all this shit going on. So that was the trust issues. That's why the song Betrayal. I hope this shit don't come in between us for like all the music could tell you everything, bro. People just, I don't know, maybe they not listening or something. But if you listen to the album Trust Issues, I got all of us on the cover. I break it, break it all down for you. You feel me? This is 2018. So then, uh, I drop another mixtape, which is on my mama too. At this time, I, I'm a, I got Bearline. She my new A and R now. Bearline, you feel me? And uh, she, she was cool as fuck, bro. I fuck with her still to this day. Like she fucked with me and everything. But it was just like, it's, it's gonna be hard to get them budgets approved now, bro. Like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I went from getting $50,000 budgets and shit, dropping, doing $7 million on my videos and shit, to doing two hundred k, four hundred k, Because, nigga, I don't got that label push behind me no more. So now, I don't, you know, and this shit all marketing and shit. So, you know, I don't got the label behind me no more because, nigga, I said fuck my solo shit and went to do this group shit. So now I'm suffering... On my on the solo end, so now I'm like shit. I ain't got no choice but to just keep trying trying to make this shit work. Cause nigga, my solo shit, I didn't blew it, and I'm in a and I'm in a label. I'm in a, a record deal, bro. So everything go through them. So I can't drop unless they tell. I say I could drop. I can't do nothing unless they tell me I could do nothing. So now I'm stuck, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So now I got no choice but to try to make this group shit work. Cause nigga, I'm not finna get paid from this label shit no more. I can't drop an album. Only way I could get paid is if I drop an album. But I can't drop an album. It's over. You feel me? So I got to try to make this shit work. And then that's fucking my solo shit up even more because I'm paying less attention to that and I'm more focused on this. So I'm I'm making it hard on Bearline because she can't even really fucking go all in and do all the shit because, nigga, I'm, oh, we doing this, we doing that. So they got to, she got to structure everything around what we doing as a group. You feel me? So that's making it hard on her. So I don't even blame her. You feel me? I just didn't know how the music business worked at the time. So, but the, but you did end up dropping. So, so I dropped another mixtape, which was on my mama too. And then, um, 
after On My Mama 2, this, the group's still together and shit at this time. This was 2019. So then, uh, 2020 come, top of 2020, Stretch end up hitting me like, man, I got a way that you could get out the deal or whatever. I'm like, hell yeah, fuck it, bro. Like, I'm in this label. I can't drop. I can't do nothing. They not pushing my shit. Nothing. Like, fuck it. Like, and at this time, I'm not even knowing. The whole game didn't change from when we came out. Yeah. This shit. Algorithmic now. This shit. All algorithms yeah. and all kind of crazy new shit that I nigga knew nothing about, bro. Right. Feel me? I just knew about dropping and going crazy. Now you can't, it ain't no dropping and going crazy no more. This shit all set up. You got to get playlisted. Playlist got to get approved. Labels on playlist. All kind of crazy shit going wow. on now that I know nothing about. So I'm thinking you, I'm finna just lead this label. With y'all, it was all organic. Yeah. And this area is <laughs> no, not it's not. Like that. It's not organic no more. So I'm thinking I'm finna just leave this shit. And that's crazy, right? Because that's only three year difference. Yeah. Shit changed that shit much in three fast. years. So uh, we I, uh, leave 2020. Um, I leave out the deal and shit. You feel me? And uh, I start going independent. But at this time, this when the group break up and shit. And I, and as a and what my mindset is like, cause I'm a realist, bro. At the time, I felt like number one, I was already trying to go do some whole other. I was trying to get get on a whole nother lane, bro. Cause some motherfuckers like jumped in the streets, be jumping in the streets after they rap and shit, and they want to be tough afterwards, bro. But I've been in this shit forever. I've been in Vallejo forever. I never left Vallejo. I didn't go to a different place, nothing. I stayed in Vallejo until we went on that first tour, bro. I never left Vallejo. It's all I ever knew in my life, bro. I risked my life every day. I'm talking about coming from tours, Black Panther soundtracks, everything. I'm back in the field, in the car, taking trips, like really one of them for real. So I'm risking everything. I'm putting it all on the line, bro, for everything and for everybody that I risked it all for to Fuck me over in the end, bro. It's like, nigga, fuck that shit, bro. I'm finna go live. I never got to live. Nice. So now I'm like, fuck that shit, bro. I'm about to live. Yeah. You feel me? So now I'm living. I'm having different experiences. I'm big Newport Beach in it. I'm, there you go. Nigga, you feel me? I'm balling out, nigga. It's go. time to live. Nigga, right. I ain't never lived before, nigga. I've been That's having right. all this success and I'm in the field. Nigga, yeah. fuck this shit. For, for y'all. Right. Now I'm... Going to war with some niggas that I just was sliding for. Right. Man, right. I'm finna go ball out. We finna go live it up. There nigga, let's, go, let's, like, you feel me? I'm trying to do some different shit. Like, yeah. Cause if this is what it's gonna be, like, this is a nigga gonna crash all the way out. So it's like, fuck it then, bro. Let me go experience some life at least before a nigga crash all the way out. No, you yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, boom. I went on that rampage from 2020 to like 2022, bro. I just was living life just. Then my cousin died in 2021, Flex City Streets. You feel me? He died in 2021. So then that was a whole nother situation. That brought me back for a few months. But nigga, bottom line, at the end yeah, of the yeah. day, so boom, all that shit go on, blah, blah, blah. Go solo, go independent. And I've been dropping independent every since, doing my shit. You feel me? Fuck the narrative that anybody got to say. You feel me? Niggas made history. This shit legendary. I'm going to forever be legendary. I got six plaques. You feel me? Platinum, gold. I got shit outside the group that's gold. I'm him. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, at the end of the day, too, another thing I want to say before we go yes. is that people look at us now and they say, SOBRB, them niggas dumb as fuck. They fumbled. They dropped the ball. No, that Bay Area dropped the ball. Y'all dropped the ball because when we was in position and we was dropping these albums, y'all wasn't supporting us like y'all was supposed to. When Y'all was mad at us because we was getting outside the Bay Area. Y'all made niggas have to come back to the Bay Area and start just doing local shit to love niggas again. That's mm -hmm. what y'all do to every artist that get big and get outside of the Bay. Y'all say, fuck them, they ain't out here no more. You feel me? And then now they got to come back and say, fuck all the shit, the bigger shit that could take the Bay Area to a bigger place. They got to sacrifice that now to please the Bay. So not only did we drop the ball, but y'all dropping the ball too. Y'all got to support y'all artists when we make it to the top don't be mad. Just keep supporting, bro, because that's why we can't get nowhere. Because every time an artist gets to the top, and you could go with every artist from the Bay, not just us, any artist from the Bay besides E-40 and Too Short. Once we get to the top and make it outside the Bay, the Bay Area don't fuck with us no more. Then we got to come back to the Bay. And while we come back to the Bay, we please the Bay, not the Bay back fucking with us again. But everybody else, like... I agree. Yeah, some local I agree 100 percent man. After I dropped this the Slimmy podcast, I saw a lot. I know I I'm a I'm a hater hater. I hate hater shit. Yeah. And um 
You know, motherfuckers just love to, like you say, spin a narrative, talk shit, uh, kick legendary people when they're down. And I, I, I'm not with that. And I think we got to change that narrative and support sure. each other. I think, like you said, just on some straight up facts, man, y'all changed the game. Y'all had a uh, y'all y'all have a legendary run. You're still you're still hella young for bro. sure. <laughs> you're all talented um, for sure, and you've been dropping music. You're dropping sure. putting out new music. You're you know just in uh, my first time dealing with you. You're very professional, bro. And I feel like there's so much more to, to be done, and it's Hell not yeah. over. And uh, this shit don't stop, man. Hell yeah! So shout out to y'all too, man, for letting my folks come up here and tell the Bay Area history the way it's supposed to be. Because you know we influenced a lot of shit in this music industry, and we don't get our proper uh, credit for it. So you feel me? It's time for the Bay Area to take over. Absolutely, bro. We're going to bring T.O. back. It was for a sure. pleasure to meet you, bro. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, I really appreciate hearing your story. And like I said, uh, we're here to support you anytime you need the platform, man. Yeah, yeah. Good looking, bro. For sure. Drex One, Young T.O. Shout out to the whole team. Technical difficulties ain't stopping shit. <laughs> we did was a legendary interview. We're going to run it right back, man. See y'all next time. Peace. Recognize where you got the game We got our own style, got our own slang Northern California is a West Coast thing This is the history of the bank Recognize where you got the game We got our own style, got our own slang Northern California is a West Coast thing This is the history of the bank